I saw Pastor Chris and Reverend Tom. They work together like friends. The, the level of commitment is too deep. Hello my family, welcome again to Direct TV, bringing you the truth. Welcome my family to this special and wonderful episode of my video today. And right in today's video guys, I'm here with the man of God by person of the highly esteemed um, Apostle Michael Orokbo. And he's going to be talking about something very key in today's message. Alright, it's a message about, you know, um, friendship. All right, the friendship that many of these great men of God that we know by a person of um, um, Bishop Oyedepo, including Pastor Chris, some of these ministers of the gospel, there are some friendship that they have, and over the years they build that friendship such that you know one can you know give out his life as an honor for one. All right, that's how important they build their relationship. And he also did mention about um, Reverend Tom and Pastor Chris while he was still explaining, um, you know, this um, this topic on loyalty. So, guys, uh, before we watch today's video, guys, for those of you coming newly to my channel, just kindly the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. And if you're not like the video, hit the like button, like today's video, guys. Watch this. I'll be right back. I was listening to Bishop Oedeko many years ago. He said he was preaching in church, and he saw somebody that was not concentrating while they were in Kaduna. After service, he met him. I said, what happened? The guy said, honestly, he saw that he didn't follow the service. Why? He said there was no food at home. He gave all that he had. Forgetting that he too was going to a house. And today you see 200,000 people attend a Sunday service. You say, no, we have the faith to take over this city. When we bring 20. <laughs> Some people preach the doctrine of loyalty until loyalty becomes Jesus because they want everybody to be submitted to them. Meanwhile, they have no love for those people. This same man we are talking about, many years ago, when he just got married, there were seven of them in one room. How can you keep six men with your wife, newlywed? And he said, 5 a.m., everybody leaves the house. And no matter what you are doing, from 4 p.m., no visitors. That's how they ran their lives for over three years. And today, you see people like Bishop Abioye follow him die hard. You say, ah, can you imagine? Uh, where are the Abioyes of our generation? Do you know the love that he enjoyed from the man? Bishop Abioye slept on bench in Meduguri for over two years. But before that level of loyalty was engendered, there was a love that was received. He saw when they lived in the same house, do you know how inconveniencing it is to get married to a young lady and then bring her to live with seven people in one room? That means the early marriage was robbed. He didn't know what it meant to enjoy early marriage. And then today you see men loyal to them. You come and stand on Facebook. You say some men have become gods. They manipulate with you. <laughs> if, it's because we're in the era of grace. God would have killed you. People don't know the truth. They come. Some carry loyalty as a weapon. They preach 30 script, 30 messages. 29 is about loyalty. Because they want you to die for them. Meanwhile, do you think people are loyal because you taught, taught them message on loyalty? When they see love in your heart, it provokes their conscience. They cannot. See, dying for you becomes an honor. That's what David did. David went to war with his warriors. David sat together, ate with them. They experienced everything together. When those men died for David, they called it an honor. A comrade spirit was born. Not because he sat down and used scripture to manipulate people into loyalty. No, there was too much love for this man to betray him. There was too much love for this man to compromise. They knew that this man loved them genuinely. When you find ambitious people, they are not interested in impact. You are with them for 10 years. They don't care about the quality of your life. They are only interested in how you will serve them and perform so that all things will look well. And then you are killing people say they are saying they are not loyal. Come on. Forget that charade. As you see Bishop Abiyo and Bishop Oedeko, what's the difference? In the same ministry, he ordained himself. He was ordained bishop. He ordained Abiyo as bishop. If he shows up, the quality of his life is the same quality you see in Abiyo's life. So if you cannot love like Oedeko, don't expect a lawyer Abiyoye. Ambition, ambition. People using people and then trying to use the gospel to masquerade. In, forget it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. I saw Pastor Chris and Reverend Tom. 
they work together like friends. The, the level of commitment is too deep. See, some of these men, what they share is deeper than even what they have with their wives. And then you wonder why people commit themselves. Our dinner, my, my, one of my sons wrote recently, he said, the brotherhood is no longer sincere. The brotherhood, the brotherhood has been compromised. So self-preservation migrates from what? Fear to ambition. People are not interested in others. They just want to use them. And they want to use them because they want to create impression, not impact. And I'm not just talking ministry. Even in your hairdressing salon. People come, you don't care about their lives. You don't care about, you use them, strain them like donkeys. At the end of the day, it's about you and your saloon. You don't care about the people. It's called self-preservation. At the end of the day, that your saloon will wreck more people than any gain you will ever make. And that's what our world is suffering today. You see one man is a God among one million people. No other person looks like him. Even the so-called people that are assisting him, when you look at them, you wonder whether they are servants. The quality of their life is a reproach to what the person claims it stands for. Ambition. When you find ambition, know that self-preservation is at work. Number three. Faithlessness. When the man migrates from ambition, he arrives at a point of faithlessness. Everything he's doing is built on his capacity, not on God's capacity through him. So when you find him talk, it's about his intelligence. It's about his certificates. It's about his human connection. And he will do anything to manage it. And check, most of our messages now is about building relationship. And we invoke the principles of Babylon to teach the body of Christ what you need to do to manage this relationship and manage this relationship, what you need to do. All of that is born out. You will now discover that our messages now refines our fleshly abilities and not the ability of God on our inside. In the days of the fathers, when they taught relationship, they taught it from the ground of integrity. They taught it from the ground of truthfulness. They taught it from the ground of loyalty. They taught it from the ground of capacity and competence. In our generations today, when we teach relationship, we teach gift, manipulation. That's what we teach. We build our relationships on manipulation, including marriage. You come to marriage seminars, and then you see pastors telling people how their wives should dress naked, eh, do like this, do like principles of Babylon. Did you marry the woman because she was naked? Babylon, Babylon. Somebody can outrightly teach you to use a gift and deceive your boss. Even though there's no loyalty, there's no commitment. The same things you will learn from the world. That's what we refine now and teach in church. And then you'll find people saying, Kai, wisdom, Kai, this wisdom, ah, this wisdom, wisdom that turns you to a crook. No commitment, no loyalty. Create impression, win the person's trust. That's what we teach now as relationship. Because we are oriented towards self-preservation. And these are the things that our generation love. The Bible said in the last day, men will heap unto themselves teachers that tell them sweet things. And so after a while, you discover people no longer bank on God. People bank on their human connections because they've taught it. People bank on their mental capacity. People bank on everything apart from God. Meanwhile, Jesus said in John 15, 5, he said, without me, you can do nothing. All right, my family, there you have it with the man of God by person of Apostle Michael Oropo. Now, guys, um, you see, I, I'm sure you are blessed by this amazing, amazing topic concerning loyalty. 
You see, um, this thing is very important. And when you look at the life of the those men of God, I'll use um the man of God, Pastor Chris and Reverend Tom, as a point of example. All right, if you look at their lives, you see, um, you know, it is it is amazing that Reverend Tom can still honor the man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris, the way he does, even till now. All right, this is somebody that he started ministry with. There are a lot of people that is starting ministry with somebody. You'll be like, there are some people that would ah, I, I should have the same right to this person. But the honor that the man of God, Reverend Tom, gives to Pastor Chris is out of this world. And that is why their friendship is something that the world needs to emulate, something they need to learn because it's out of this world. How can you stay with a man for that long and then you are still honoring him the way you do? It can only be because something has been given to you, something has been shown to you, and that's love. And that's exactly the man of God, um, Apostle Michael Roku is trying to portray, um, portray in today's um, video. I'm very sure you are blessed. I'm very, very sure you are blessed. So let me know in the comment section what has blessed you in today's video. For those of you coming new to my channel, just kindly hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. And then if you haven't liked the video up to this point, please hit the like button like to this video, guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.